Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm very excited to show you my biggest project yet. I created a PC that is completely funless, that can perform demanding tasks like 4K video editing, extreme multitasking and gaming. This has been challenging because I wanted everything to be cool in temperatures as well. I didn't want a PC that would burn up like a laptop reaching 100 degrees Celsius in usage. I wanted something that would be reliable for years. I'm going to show you the parts that I chose and why, as well as take you through the process and explain to you how I managed to pull this off. For the case, I chose to go with the HTplex H5. It's a very well made, heavy aluminum case that serves as the primary heatsink for almost everything in the build. It has a minimalistic, industrial design that, in my opinion, looks great. The case came with everything I needed to get started, except for the GPU heatsink, which had to be purchased separately. As you can see here, the parts are of extremely high quality and they give you the impression that they will last for a long time. I chose to go with Intel's i5-13600K. This decision was based on the CPU's utilization of their latest core architecture, which is Raptor Cove, and its larger L2 cache compared to the 12th generation. Anything higher in terms of performance would have been more challenging to cool, although still possible. The reason I didn't opt for a higher-end processor was simply that I didn't require that much power for my specific use cases. The i5 processor provides more than enough power for my needs, including video editing, multitasking and gaming. For the graphics card, I chose to go with the RTX 3060 due to its price to VRAM ratio and efficiency. While I could have gone with the RTX 4070, I wasn't certain if the GPU heatsink from HTplex would be compatible. I know that the pricing of the RTX 4000 series is all over the place right now, but I was willing to overlook it in favor of its efficiency, which, to be honest, is on a different level compared to the 3000 series. However, I encountered some issues with using this GPU, which I will speak about later in the video. For the motherboard, I opted for an ASRock Z790, which is a mini ITX board that provides all the features I need, including two front M.2 slots, an efficient VRM design, DDR5 support, Wi-Fi 6E, and Bluetooth 5.2. I chose ASRock because, in my opinion, they offer the best value for money when it comes to motherboards and have proven to be the most reliable based on my personal experience. For the RAM, I went with 64GB at uh, 4200MHz, as it's more than enough for me. I'm not planning to use XMP profiles, as they raise the base voltage of the sticks, which results in higher power consumption and more heat, which we don't want in this build. RAM needs to be cooled because above a certain temperature, it starts throwing errors. In a regular PC case, you don't need to worry that much, because you have airflow always going over the sticks. In my use case, I need to think about all components and how to cool them properly, especially those that are more sensitive to heat like RAM. For the storage, I opted for a 2TB Kingston KC3000, which is a Gen 4 NVMe drive. It offers impressive speed considering its price point. I plan to install Windows on this drive while using my other 2TB ADATA NVMe SSD for storing video files and games. Of course, if I want to maximize thermal transfer, I need to use a correction frame which helps with cooler contact. So I got this one that does the job just fine. For for the NVMe SSDs, I bought some heavy-duty heatsinks from Thermalrite. These heatsinks will help maintain the SSDs at acceptable temperatures, especially since there won't be any airflow to assist in thermal transfer. For powering this build, I opted for the HTplex Gallium Nitrite 250W PSU. This power supply unit is suitable for my specific use case, highly efficient and passively cooled. It will operate at around 50% power output most of the time, which is the sweet spot for efficiency. I'm aiming to minimize power consumption as much as possible with this build, as the cost of power here in Cyprus is expensive, currently at 0.35 euros or 0.38 USD at the time of writing this video. Additionally, it gets hot here during the summer and I don't want all that heat to be released into my room. First, I cleaned my workspace and unpacked everything. The plan was to assemble the main components and test if they work before proceeding to build in the case. This is a smart approach to avoid the frustration of finding out later that one of the parts is not working. 
I began by working on the motherboard, which involved replacing the stock ILM with the one I purchased. I installed the CPU. I also wanted to replace the thermal pads that were covering the motherboard chipset with the K5 Pro. K5 Pro is a thicker thermal paste that can be used as a replacement for thermal pads and offers improved performance. The only drawback is that it's quite messy to apply and more challenging to remove compared to regular thermal pads. I am unsure ensuring that I apply enough of it to cover the entire chip and any excess will spill out due to the mounting pressure. Afterwards, I spread the thermal paste on the CPU surface and proceed to mount the temporary cooler. Installing the RAM, I removed the label on the SSD to ensure optimal heat transfer between the SSD and the heatsink. Next, I cleaned the SSD heatsink using alcohol wipes to ensure it was ready for application. Then I applied the uh, K5 Pro thermal paste, ensuring that the cooler had the best mounting pressure and contact with the SSD. The PC was assembled and ready for testing. I connected it to the PSU and it successfully powered on with a post. Everything was recognized and working properly. Then I proceeded to flash a new UEFI version of the motherboard and made the decision to install Windows 11. Once in Windows, I installed all the necessary drivers. After confirming that all components were functioning correctly, it was time to begin building the case. The first step was installing the feet on the case's bottom panel then I proceeded to install the USB 3.0 ports and the Type-C port on one side and the power button on the other side. Now for the parts, I began by removing the stock heat sinks on the RAM sticks. The reason behind this is that they lack sufficient thermal mass to passively cool the sticks. They always rely on a system with either minimal or decent airflow passing over them, which won't be the case in our situation. I opted to install heavier copper heat sinks to provide better cooling for the RAM sticks. I made sure that the heat sinks covered not only the RAM modules but also the microcontroller. With DDR5, the power delivery has been shifted directly onto the RAM sticks, resulting in slightly higher temperatures compared to DDR4, despite consuming less power. Next, I was testing to see how many large sized heat sinks I could fit on the motherboard. In a passive build, the more heat sinks and surface area, the better. This approach helps helps increase the lifespan of the components and reduces temperatures, which aligns with my goals for this build. I was replacing the stock thermal pads on the motherboard that cover the VRMs with K5 Pro thermal paste. By doing this, the thermal transfer between the two components will be better. I attach small heat sinks to components that tend to heat up more during usage. Additionally, I lapped the CPU to improve the flatness and smoothness of the contact surface between it and the heatsink. To do this, I used sandpaper of varying levels of roughness on a tempered glass surface. The process required a lot of patience and it could result in almost no change in temperatures. However, I proceeded with it anyway because I wanted to take advantage of every possible benefit and maximize the performance of the build. Next, I worked on the power supply which I had previously modified with several heatsinks to make sure it could handle all conditions. I decided to desolder the stock cables and replace them with custom length braided ones. Additionally, I swapped out the thermal pads with my own and this time I plan to use the K5 Pro thermal paste for better heat transfer between the power supply's board and its shell. Before proceeding with the custom cable modification, I began preparing all the necessary tools such as a soldering iron, hot air gun, heat shrink and of course patience. First, I connected the three wires, ground, live and neutral to the plug. As you can see, the result looks fantastic. Moreover, the cable itself is aesthetically pleasing. I desoldered the wires from the PSU board and carefully soldered my own cables in their place. As you can see, the outcome turned out quite well. With the cables installed, it was time to fill up the case with K5 Pro thermal paste. This would ensure optimal heat transfer throughout the PSU. 
few. Now the power supply is fully prepared and ready to use. Returning to the case assembly, I made sure to use the bottom panel for heat dissipation. I added two 3mm thick thermal pads beneath the CPU socket and placed a thin 0.5mm thermal pad for the PSU, allowing it to touch the bottom panel for effective heat dissipation. I connected the cables and proceeded to install the CPU block and heat pipes. I also added smaller heatsinks around the block and a larger one for the bottom panel to maximize the surface area and thermal mass. After partially closing the case, I tested to ensure that everything was functioning properly. A few days later, my GPU arrived, so I checked if the GPU heatsink system will fit. After testing it off camera with stress tests, I decided to tear down the GPU. However, after trying for 20 minutes, I couldn't find a way to make the block fit. It turned out that a small component on the GPU was slightly taller and getting in the way. Unfortunately, this specific Asus Phoenix model was not compatible with the block. Then, like any rational person will do, I spent another 300 euros to purchase the same GPU. This time I opted for the PNY Verto Dual. Before turning on the camera, I tested the new GPU and discovered that I could easily secure two of the mounting screws diagonally. That was all I needed to proceed with it. I noticed that it had an aluminum back panel, but by default it was not utilized for heat dissipation. I decided to remove the protective layer from from the back panel of the GPU to expose the metal surface. This would create more surface area for heat to dissipate. I applied K5 Pro Thermal Paste to sink the heat from the back side of the VRM and the GDDR6 modules. For the GPU core, I used regular thermal paste while K5 Pro was applied to the GDDR6 modules. This approach proved to be successful. Next up was covering all the heat generating components with heat sinks. I then started preparing the case for the final modification, which was to install the GPU. Got to make sure to use the front panel as well for heat dissipation. Every little bit helps. I used the PCI 4.0 riser cable, which was 20 centimeters in length. I cleaned all the heat pipes using alcohol wipes and applied thermal paste to the channels of the case and the GPU block. I then proceeded to install them and seal the heatsink. Additionally, I made sure to utilize the top panel for increased surface area. In this build, every component and surface is utilized to maximize heat dissipation. After testing for a few days, I noticed that the RAM modules were getting quite hot, reaching 67 degrees Celsius after a couple of hours of gaming. This was in a room with a temperature of 29 degrees Celsius. I then decided to look for a stronger heatsink for the RAM sticks, and I was lucky to find one from Thermaltake, originally designed for DDR1 and DDR2 modules. I quickly purchased the last two two available on Amazon. After removing the sticker, cleaning off the glue and taking them apart, I found that the heatsink had two aluminum sides with a copper heat pipe attached to a copper heat spreader. I removed the RAM sticks from their slots and applied K5 Pro Thermal Paste on both sides, while using a regular thermal paste for the heat pipe of the heatsink. I made sure to apply a good amount of thermal paste on the controller of the RAM sticks because that part gets the hottest and needs the most cooling. It was a messy process, but it was worth it for better temperatures. Before installing the heatsinks, I tested different positions to find the best one that wouldn't an interference. By adjusting the PSU cables and tilting the heat spreader, I figured out how to make them fit. I finished closing the case and now the building process is done. Whether it's gaming or video editing, everything stayed at a good temperature, mostly hovering around 65 to 75 on a hot day and 55 to 65 with AC on 28 degrees. I'm planning to create a follow-up video to show you the temperatures in detail and what software changes I made to achieve those. I'll show you everything from my BIOS settings to what I used inside Windows. Everything you saw in the video can be found in the description as 
links. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If I have enough questions, I'll do a follow-up video answering them. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing with your friends. Thank you for watching the video everyone and until next time, take care and uh, farewell.